watching live. So hopefully we should see this counter counting up. And we've got one person watching on Periscope, so that's really reassuring. Exactly, it's a win, it's, it's all good. So um, thank you all very much for uh, turning up today. My name is Mark Settle and I work at the, uh, well it used to be called the College of Journalism, it's now part of the BBC Academy, where I do the training for journalists and others about how they can use their smartphone, mainly an iPhone, to record, edit, capture and send material from wherever they are in the field. And for the last sort of couple of years I've been doing that job. But this advent of live streaming, although one of the questions is how new is it, but this advent of live streaming through apps like Periscope has really changed the perspective. And that's what we're trying to explore today, hopefully with uh, three of the brightest brains in the BBC and your questions as well, and possibly the questions on Periscope too. So uh, firstly we'll be hearing from Mark Frankel, who's the assistant uh, editor within uh, social media, within the UGC team on the uh, ground floor. Then of course Rory Kecklin Jones, the BBC's technology correspondent. And look, finally we'll be hearing from Colin Muir, who's the SBJ within mobile journalism. And what he doesn't know about apps like this, no pressure, probably is worth knowing about. So have a think about the questions. Um, we've got sort of the three sections. So Mark will be looking at sort of the editorial, what you need to be thinking about, why you should perhaps be using things like Periscope, but other live streaming apps are available. Rory about how to use it, the sort of the user experience and the user at the other, other end, how they see it. And then Colin looking at some of the technology, some of the things you really need to, need to know about. So we'll start firstly with Mark. And so the question really to Mark is, why should a journalist think about doing live streaming through Periscope or indeed any other live streaming app? Well, hello, everybody. Um, as Mark said, live streaming is not a new concept. It's been around for a while, but I think what is new is the combination of live streaming and social media. That bringing together of people's experience in sharing and interacting and broadcasting live. And what I think Periscope offers and Minhat offers and Live Station offers and many others, hopefully we will we'll mention this afternoon, is an ability to connect, if you're a journalist, directly with your audience. Obviously, we do things here at BBC and elsewhere in other broadcasting organisations where we're talking to an audience, we are inviting people to comment on things, responding to those comments. But this is a live, interactive experience, like none other, on a platform that allows people to immediately share with their followers. And so it's, it's like a virus, if you like, a positive virus, but it spreads very, very quickly. And I think that's something that we all need to understand at the outset. I think where Periscope, to answer your question Mark, more directly, where Periscope is particularly interesting is because it has that connection with Twitter and because tw Twitter involves so many journalists and so many people who are interested in news, you get a sense of real-time interaction with, on, a, on a fairly kind of um, broad brush way across many, many different subjects and themes. So, for example, I, I did a live stream the other day on Periscope on election night. Uh, I don't have a lot of followers on Twitter, but within a few minutes of going live, I was talking to Steve Herman and various other people behind the scenes here in the broadcasting house as we all prepared for the election night. There were literally hundreds and hundreds of people interested in how we were organising, what we were doing, what was going on, how we, we were preparing our graphics, preparing for the night ahead. So it brings the audience right into the centre of the newsroom. And I think the first big win with uh, apps like Periscope is that behind the scenes intimacy. It's some, something that's very difficult for us to do. We're always looking at ways in which we can make our broadcasting more interesting, more relevant to people. And it's of, often that behind the scenes con concept is particularly hard for us to achieve because we're not set up to do that. Periscope allows us to do that. Meerkat allows us to do that kind of thing. We can immediately walk around, show people how we're preparing for things, give that sense of intimacy. The other thing I think we, we can do quite easily um, with, with these kind of apps is a kind of daily newsy blog, if you like. We can bring the news alive, bring our own areas of interest alive in analytical terms with quick hits. So for example, we can go live on Periscope for 10 minutes and say, we're working on something here, we're interested in your ideas, this is how far we've got, maybe you could contribute something to this. Um, we're interested to know more about what you have to say about this. If you tell us, we'll find a place for that in some form in our journalism. So it brings the audience again into something that is quite interactive, newsy, blogging, a format that allows you to then construct your own news stories. 
And I think the, the final sort of area is coming back to that kind of live and interactive is when you get these comments from people, uh, from members of the audience, your followers uh, on Periscope or Meerkat, wherever it happens to be, there is a, is a way that you can immediately then capture these comments because they're coming up on screen, respond directly to them. And unlike the, the, the more traditional way of commenting where we have a comment widget at the bottom of the story and we have to allow people to, to post things and then those are post-moderated and only the post-moderated comments are appearing, this gives people an immediate way into the story. So that's that sense of immediacy straight into the center of the story. Now, with all of these things, there are risks. And I know that my colleagues to the left of me here are probably going to want to touch on this too. Um, for us as journalists, we value more than anything the feedback that we get on, on our journalism as it happens. But the, one, the biggest risk, I think, with all of these apps, especially with Periscope, is the comments appear, there is very little that you can do about that. There isn't a sense that you can sort of post-moderate as the comments are appearing, you can't swipe left and get rid of things on Periscope. Um, there is a problem there, potentially for us, if, we were if we're dealing with a subject that is quite sensitive. So you need to think quite carefully before you start, before you launch one of these live streaming experiences. Is this something that could inspire, could um, promote that kind of comment, that kind of commenting, and put you in some kind of difficulty. And if it does, maybe that's not the best way to do it. There are other ways, for example, you could take some video, edit the video, and then post the video to your social media channels or online, and allow people to comment on the finished product. It might be more um, convenient, more right, in certain circumstances to do that. So you need to think carefully about the live commenting. You also need to think about Copyright, ownership, rights, that whole field of things that we sometimes need to think about. You know, always holding his head in his hand. They're, the ownership of these videos is yours. You own the video, but as soon as you put it out publicly, it becomes the property of other people to distribute. So you might own, it might be your video, but they can distribute it, they can freely use it in any way, capacity, shape or form they see fit. That may not work for you, or your program, or your area. You need to think carefully about that. And I think the, the final area that I was going to touch on before I pass on to, or back to Mark and then on to Rory, is around the kind of video. Um, Periscope, and in fact, a lot of these uh, live streaming apps are recording video vertically. Um, there is an issue here, and um, there are discussions going on about video being uh, produced horizontal. Obviously, that would work better for us in broadcasting terms. But for the moment, there is no substitute in high quality, high definition video for what we can produce with high, defi high defi definition cameras. What Periscope allows you is the ability to interact directly with an audience. It doesn't give you high quality, broadcast quality video that you would immediately want to stick onto a television screen. It may be in certain circumstances, and Nick Garnis I think is a very good example of this, our very own Nick Garnett, who was in Nepal recently, did some fantastic Periscope video, um, and hopefully he might be joining us a bit later. He did some video. Now, that was taken vertically, but because he was the only person there, it had a quality, it had a, it had a shelf life to it, and we wanted to use it. But in most circumstances, you wouldn't necessarily want to take vertical video and put it straight onto a television screen. I'll pick Mark up on something that I'll open for in a moment. Um, about the aspect of devoting an iPhone using Periscope or a smartphone using other apps like Meerkat to just live stream to a very small audience. Is there a danger that a journalist could be prioritising almost like an ego trip for something that a few people will see when they could be news gathering something which will have much greater appeal? Yes, yeah. no, I think that's a very good point. And, you know, we have to, let's be honest about this, Periscope is a, is a new thing on the block, it's a new kid on the block, it's getting a lot of attention, but when you go live on these platforms, the audience numbers are still fairly limited. And if you've got something that is really worth sharing, there's no substitute to getting it back into the building here in news gathering terms so that we can share it on our own platforms as quickly as possible, make the most of it on our television programs, um, rather than saying, well, I've got a periscope about this, restrict myself to having this video on my camera roll um, for 24 hours or for however long, um, and then forget that side of things. We're BBC journalists. Uh, for people watching this, you may be journalists in other news organisations. That's of the priority for us is making the most of it for our own news organisation. Okay. Um, so thank you to Mark Frankel.
Uh, anyone got immediately a question to ask Mark? Don't worry if you haven't. It's fine. Yes, hello. Uh, can people um, edit your videos? Can people edit the videos? I think once they're on Periscope or... It, yeah. I, I don't think that's true. I don't think actually one of the issues is it's very hard, uh, this is a problem for me, it's very hard to retrieve the video once it's there. If you upload it, um, which, you, which is an option once the periscope is over, then you can see it for the next 24 hours. Uh, but I mean, I'm sure clever folks in, um, uh, down in the basement can, can extract it. But for, for most people, actually getting hold of a video once it's you, you can not save it your camera roll, or once it's on your camera roll, then you can put it onto yeah. YouTube or anywhere else, but then you've still got to the vertical strip. So Rory being the technol te technology correspondent, you must see more exciting hot new apps than almost anyone else in this building. Is this any more than just this week's hot new app? Um, I think the jury's still out on that. By the way, you've got your periscope there. I've got my meerkat right here. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I started getting into... Um, this particular a couple of months ago when I saw Me Meerkat uh, was the first of this new wave. As we heard, this isn't a new thing. Something called Bamboozer was around a while ago. Uh, there have been other live streaming apps uh, and they've not really taken off, I think, for two reasons. A, there wasn't the bandwidth available to most people and B, as we've heard, there wasn't the sort of social media capability. <coughs> um, I've been, you know, be the, the buzz around it has got, got me really interested, uh, and I've seen it as just another tool uh, in, in the armory of any, uh, uh, of any journalist. And one that I'm still you know, kind of 50-50 about whether it will have a major impact. So I started doing Meerkat, um, I had this fantastic um, incident when I was inside St. James's Palace where the Duke of York had invited a whole lot of technology folks for a, uh, an event. And I was wandering around saying rather arrogantly, this is a world first, the first live meerkat inside a royal palace. And I bumped straight into a woman from the website Mashable who said, no it isn't, I've been doing it for the last half hour. So um, uh, for me, it was one of those competitive things where you know the technology world had leapt upon this, um, and so you had to be part of it. Uh, how am I using it? Um, I suppose two ways. First of all, and I think this will soon be less interesting for an audience, giving people a bit of behind the scenes feel of what we do um, in terms of broadcasting. Um, I've seen some good examples of that for uh, BT Sport, uh, the main presenter of BT Sport, uh, Jake Humphrey, uh, doing, um, showing people around the, um, uh, the OB trucks before a, an Arsenal game, and giving people a preview of the Arsenal game on that. Um, uh, but I've also been using it just to uh, involve people in an event as it unfolds, uh, when I know that I'm not going to quite get on um, air with that event. <laughs> the prime example being last Thursday night, I was at um, the Twickenham count with Vince Cable, and um, for many, many hours, um, uh, there was uh, little to do except, except Periscope, and I got quite good reaction by just taking people on a tour of the OB truck, inside, watching the, the ballot boxes arrive, uh, and um, just giving people a sort of feel of what a count looked like. And uh, the exciting thing there was, uh, and in and a lot of these uh, periscopes, uh, was the instant interaction with the audience. Um, uh, and where I'm slightly cautious about that is it's great at the moment, um, the more of it there is, the worse it gets, and the more it's, it's kind of like the internet as a whole. A wonderful forum for democracy when it starts, and a bear pit within, um, uh, within a few years, and this, is, this process has already been accelerated. Um, so one, one example of how I saw it working at first and what got me enthusiastic about it, when, when Periscope was still in the beta stage, the astronaut Commander Hatfield, who is one of the world's great natural broadcasters, did a, a periscope, where, which was called Packing My Suitcase. And you thought, how banal is that? There's a man sitting on the suitcase, packing, and talking about what he's packing. But he was getting questions, and it all ended up with a fascinating discussion about underwear in space, and what's the best underwear in space, and how often we change it, and so on. And he had an instant connection with his audience. Um, and I think that, at its best, is what we can get from this. Will it last? Um, 
I mean, there's a terrible sort of dilemma between growing your audience. Uh, once you get too big an audience, that interaction will become much clumsier. Um, between doing that and, and having that interaction, so uh, I think it's got uh, it's got great potential. I'm, I'm still kind of um, in two minds about whether in a year's time we'll all move on to the completely different. And do you find when you're doing your live stream, whether it's Periscope or Meerkat, that it's commissioned by programmes or events that you are involved in, or it's just you saying this would be a good thing? Oh, I am my own commission. It's one of the great things about the new technology. I've spent, you know, 25, 30 years waiting for a commission, and I can commission myself. But in, in a real way, yeah. this is one of the great things about all these live streaming apps. That previously, streaming, broadcasting, live anywhere would be quite a palaver. You know, a full sat truck and all the rigmarole that comes with it. Now, you have one of these phones and the right app. Well, you know, you pretty much can do it. So, uh, any questions particularly for Rory before we move on to uh, Colin Muir, who has the real technical expertise? Hello. I think one, one issue which was also covered uh, by Mark, sorry, uh, was the landscape issue. But also, I found I've used it in the studio situation and also before sports broadcasts. You get that great connectivity, but only a certain number of people can comment if there are a lot of people connected to the broadcast and also. The messages, questions can become quite intrusive on the screen. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Can I just talk about the landscape vertical where I, I've really changed my mind? When it, when it started, I was thought, this is absolute madness. I drunk the Mark Settle Kool Aid and thought, this was very, very bad. Vertical video was the ultimate sin. I now think what some of my younger colleagues have told me which is that this is what the kids do. Mm. The, the, this is such, this is, it's hopeless to see this as broadcasting. It's a different thing. It's a thing people do on their phones, and it'll either work or not work, but it'll work on their phones. We shouldn't really be seeing it as a, a way of getting content to put on the big screen. Just, just to do it, I think the issue for us, though, is, it not, is that we are broadcasters, mm. and we have to try and disconnect what works for Periscope or what works for television. And I think sometimes there is a tendency when these things come along that we want to connect everything back to our main, to our yeah. traditional platforms. I mean, it might be that in this case you're absolutely right that it exists as vertical video, it's shared as vertical video, and we need to keep it slightly, slightly removed from our other other broadcasts in that way. That's, I think that's absolutely the case. Yeah. Okay, and one more question over there, then we want to call it. Hi, um, you said you moved to. Is it? Is this on? <laughs> Good. That's all wonderful. You say. Oh, just shout. You say you're your own commissioner, but inevitably, do you not worry what your bosses might think about something that slips out in a... Like, I worry all the time about my bosses. I can see one of my bosses at the back there. And, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it, it's in exactly the same position as what we've been saying for the last three or four years about social media, and about Twitter in particular. You've got to... Um, that's, that's the other thing I haven't said. I spent the first few times I did this, going around saying to people, don't swear, you're on live, whatever. Um, you have to treat it as broadcasting, you have to have that in your head all the time. But, um, you have less control, don't you? You have less control over the people around you. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I do, I do think about what is a suitable place to periscope and what is not. But I got asked um, on the periscope from Twickenham by some punters. Surely you're not allowed to do that. I thought there was a kind of a law against it, but um, I didn't think there was. Okay, um, we'll come back to some more questions later on, but now we're going to move on to Colin. So Colin uh, is in charge of many things to do with mobile phones within uh, the mobile journalism department within News Gap, and he's brought on his uh, special little rig. So I wanted to speak to, and hear from Colin about the technical aspects, about not just things like uh, Periscope, but other apps as well. But first of all, do you want to talk us through why you got that rig, and what it is, and why it makes a difference? Well, I mean, the, the first thing to, to, to bear in mind is that uh, <coughs> Uh, the, the last three or four years, and I'm going to turn it around so you can see it. Um, you know, live in the um, we, We've actually been trying to um, think about how we actually go live on telly with smartphones. So that it's, it's very interesting in the last uh, so three or four months um, how there's been an explosion of this type of technology and how social media has overtaken um, everything. Something quite empowering about that, but at the same time, something slightly daunting about it. But. Um, as, as we're a broadcaster, um, there's lots of things that we need to think about. Um, are we 
you know, are we going to do it in quality, or are we going to, or, or do our ideas actually want a very rough and ready feel? Um, are we just going to grab a phone and, and move around? Um, but you know, when, when we've been looking at going live with our smartphones or television, we've, we've, we've tried to recreate the uh, a sat truck in, in your pocket analogy, so you actually have to use, we've actually put together kits with tripods, um, uh, microphone cables that allow you to plug in a lapel microphone or a, a stick microphone, and then you have to think about uh, things like that night time, are you going to be going live at night? And this is actually um, a kit that went to um, one of the counts, that went to the back, one of the back counts, um, and that enabled our, our team there to actually go live during the count to, to do live behind the scenes, like our scope, um, in the truck, but also um, go live in the dark. I mean, and these are, there's a lot of technical aspects that you need to bear in mind when you're actually u using a device um, to go live and, and how you can get the, the best out of it. So a, um, a tripod like this, which, which can also be um, uh, converted into a monopod, or for want of a better word, a selfie stick, um, is, is a very interesting um, piece, is a, is a very good piece of kit, kit to, to, to have on you, because I mean, it does allow you to actually start going live on your own uh, in a number of uh, circumstances. Um, can I just ask, am I taking that kind of way with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if you're paying for prize for being a ship, yeah, yeah. you're trying to take part. Yeah. Yes, you can start more. Yeah, more freely. Um, so um, the, the reason that we, we use this frame is because literally all of our kits were actually made for uh, iPhone 6s or I, iPhone 5s. And we had to find something that was uh, big enough to actually uh, hold a uh, 6 plus. I think this is 6 plus. Um, and also get a light on it at the same time. Um, so the the thing that's enabling all of this, the live streaming on Periscope, the live streaming on, on Meerkat, is the availability of connectivity. And that's that's the biggest thing that you, you have to take into to account when you're going live. If you're going to try and go live and you have no mobile phone signal, or you, have access to, uh, you don't have access to decent Wi-Fi, then you're not going to be able to go live. I mean, the reason that we're live here in such good quality is because of the, because of the good Wi-Fi in the building, the good mobile signal. Um, and one of the things that we've been doing with the news gathering over the last couple of years is trying to understand how we can actually get greater bandwidth into the phone as well as greater quality of video out of the phone. So actually we, we've been looking at um, broadcast apps that are able to bond together the Wi-Fi signal and the 4G signal on the phone to actually get to the point where uh, uh, we, we could be in HD either in landscape or in um, or, or in portrait. So the, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, one of the big conversations we had during the uh, during the election was, well, how do we get this stuff onto the telly? So, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff, and I think the Nick Garnett's video from the poll is a very interesting one. How do we actually get that onto TV as well? Because we actually, I mean, something like that we want to be able to reuse, it has a shelf life, perhaps, but um, certainly we need to think of, so we have to start thinking about it. Is, is it, um, should we be capturing in portrait, or should we be capturing in lands landscape and then uploading it afterwards? Does it need to be live? I mean, I think the, the interaction is the, um, with the audience on Twitter is, is the, the empowering thing, the interesting uh, aspect. But um, I, I think it, there are a lot of uh, questions that we need to ask as to how we actually get um, get, get this content onto the TV. It's quite interesting. Nick, Nick actually managed to get on Periscope 3G. Yeah, yeah. We're hoping to speak to Nick who uh, yeah. recently broadcast from Nepal on 3G. We're hoping to get him via Periscope on those screens. We don't know if the technology is going to support that. <laughs> But Colin, are you in essence saying that there are many other other apps out there, and while Periscope is good and popular, not necessarily the one that we ought to be using? Well, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, the, I guess the question is, um, and this, I certainly don't have the answer to it yet, but what is but the audience for for this content? Is, is, is our audience online? Is it on Twitter? Is it on TV? Is it a mixture of all of the above? And, and certainly the question that I, we started asking ourselves after the election is, well, we've invested in a, an app that allows us to go live on the TV, but actually should we have been investing in an app that allows us to go live on social media? I mean, I guess the, the reality is that social media or internet first is actually going to be one of the platforms, and that's really where I'm interested in seeing where we need to invest in the next uh, sort of three to four years. Do we, do we know what, because it was live station before the election, do we know how many people watch that? I wasn't directly it's, small, it's a small number. Mm. I, I wasn't directly involved in the trial, but um, certainly the, to, towards the end we were getting quite quite, quite a lot of uh, viewers, um, yeah, relatively speaking. But Live Station doesn't quite have the same kudos and the same punch to it. Doesn't quite have the same level of penetration. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but I guess the question is: is it the platform or is it the content? I mean, that's something that I'm I'm quite interested to understand.
but it sounds like the, the technology that you've got in your tripod there reflects some of the things on the mobile journalism course that I do in terms of you need good stability, you need good light, you need particularly good audio. But if you're quite some distance from somebody, they're not going to be able to hear what this, what, what, what's being said. So without some kind of external microphone, so all the same things apply when you're recording video, uh, almost exactly the same when you're live streaming, but also there are a few other factors such as very good connectivity. And most importantly, going into airplane mode. Rory, have you put your phone in airplane mode on Meerkat? Yes, yes, because you famously, Rory, tweeted that he was doing a periscope that was taken off air because someone called him while he was periscoping. Because, believe it or not, your smartphones can make and receive phone calls. So if you're actually um, on air streaming and you get a phone call, it will stop you mid-broadcast. So that's one of the real things you've got to check that you can actually uh, have done beforehand. What is that? Well, indeed, there is that. Um, and, the and of course the battery as well. I mean, I'm, I'm live streaming with an extra battery there to make sure that it keeps on going, because, you again, you don't want to be cut off in your prime because you run out of power. Um, so, Colin, just finally, with the technology aspect, some of these apps are very sort of press and play and plug and go, but other apps are a bit more configurable. Does that give journalists an advantage in terms of being able to change, for example, the, the streaming rate, the bandwidth, etc.? Um, well, the, the apps that we uh, tend to, to go for are actually apps that m manage the bandwidth themselves. I mean, that's something very important. Uh, I mean, um, me, me account, and I'm pointing to the screen over there, um, which you find, um, or, or Periscope, um, are, are only able to send a video at the bit rate that's available to it, or rather the, back, the, the, the quality of the video is dependent on the bandwidth that's, that's, that's available. Um, and so, some apps, I'm not quite sure how, how both of them work in a technical aspect, but some apps are able to adapt to the bandwidth available. So you see the quality increase and decrease depending on bandwidth. Uh, some of the apps, they won't be able to decrease, decrease the, the quality and you may start seeing um, issues with um, a breakup or you may, you may start seeing issues with lip sync. Um, these are all things that are, are interesting challenges which we, we, we've, we've been trying to solve over the last three to four years from a TV perspective but may not be actually a problem um, from a social media perspective or as much as. But it's, I guess the question is, are, where, where is the audience and where are we delivering? I think one of, the, one, of the, yeah. one of the, well, one of the interesting issues, and it's being reflected in some of the chat here, is uh, how easy it is to share at the moment. It is very, Periscope is a brand new app. Um, you know, it's apparently got only three engineers working on it. One of them contacted me and it turns out to live in Anglesey, in North Wales. Local so, story. Yeah, it's a local story. Um, and, you know, they're still working out how best to make it work. But one of the real difficulties that people complain to me about is they never actually spot the broadcast in time. It's over by the time they get there. Um, and, and working out how to tweet the link, it's not just the first time you do it, but during the broadcast is, is one of the challenges. I think notification settings are a really difficult one. Because at the moment, you, know, you get this notification as soon as somebody goes live, one of your followers is live, you click on it, by the time he clicks on it, it's gone. Yeah. And I think we're all in that. Now, through the wonders of technology, we are hoping that Nick Garnett, who live streamed recently from Nepal using 3G, will appear on this screen. So, cue Nick Garnett. If we can get Nick on the screen through the link that was on Twitter. Oh, there we go. So, uh, Nick has now disappeared, even though I told him a moment ago that we're going to be coming to him live. So, any moment now, there he is. He's, he's actually, he's actually he's smaller in real life. Oh, so he's not yeah, yeah. So in a moment, Nick, uh, he's, he's covering the story about Bradford and the 30th anniversary of the fire today. But hopefully Nick uh, will see that he should be going live. So if I send him a message on Periscope to say start, hopefully in a moment, this is one of the problems. Nick being small, all of these are on the screen. Bill, Bill, Bill. Thank you. Yes, Peter. Yes, I could do that. That would probably be a wise thing to do. Um, the problem I've got, though, I explained to what, what the problem is. Is it's the whole blasted vertical video thing about Periscope, isn't it? The biggest problem of it all. That um, what we've got at the moment is uh, I'll, I'll show you this. Right, this is a, uh, a lighting stand. We're trying to rig this up, and, and we've got a lighting stand exactly the same as this, which is connected to the iPhone, but we can't put the tripod up because we'd need to link that vertical, that horizontal lighting stand. Exactly, as uh, you just said, it needs to go landscape, doesn't it? And that's the big problem, and that's the major problem that I'm having with it at the moment. Um, that for any sort of like professional use, um, it's just a real, a real, real problem. Right, Mark is telling me to tell you about the port, so that means that we're live. So if I stand back here, you should have me in a bit better light than I was before. Um, welcome to Bradford. Uh, it's now just over a week since I did the 
the live piece in Nepal. We'd gone out that day uh, to go filming and to go recording. Now, I had the live capability of a live satellite, so I was pretty lucky in that respect in that I could go live on, uh, on radio, and, and that was great. And everywhere we went that day, I was putting up the satellite. It takes about five minutes to rig, rig a baby vegan satellite and the ISDN codec, and that meant that we were able to, uh, to do live radio broadcasts. But the problem that we had was that I wanted to get what I was seeing out immediately because I was so appalling and staggering. We went into a village uh, in an area about 50 kilometers north of Nepal, and we got there in a 4x4 truck. And the, the whole village was just flattened. It was just wiped out. There was nothing left of it at all. Uh, I was staggered at how much destruction had been caused. It was as if uh, a great big wrecking ball had gone around, sweeping the village uh, to pieces. It was, it was a disaster. Uh, and I looked down at my phone, and I realized, for, I, for a reason I, sim I simply cannot explain, that there was a good 3G signal. And I speed tested it. And it was giving me the best data rate that I've had since I've landed in, in Nepal. And here we were in this village in the middle of absolute nowhere with a, a, a very, very fast 3G uh, signal. And I, I, I thought, I don't know why, I, I, Periscope immediately came to mind, which is the good thing about perhaps the way the Periscope has, has already got into our psyche. Uh, and I, I hit Periscope and started to broadcast. I'm just uh, going to tap a a low battery warning on my phone there, um, and started to broadcast. I, what, what, was, what was staggering was that the signal was going out OK. Uh, and the real problem that I had was I was walking around, looking at the, the devastation for the first time, and broadcasting it as I was doing it. And that brings in a whole load of editorial issues which uh, broadcasters need to think about. Because this was, this was live pictures from a scene of absolute devastation uh, without, and it's part of the responsibility of, of, of professional journalists, uh, without, without that filter. Uh, and that was very, very difficult to start thinking about. Uh, especially as, uh, if you watch the, the periscope, there's a, a, a link to it on YouTube. Uh, if you watch that periscope, you can see my hand shaking because what I was seeing for the first time was what you were seeing through the camera of the periscope. Uh, and and that, that realization really started to take a, uh, a, a, an issue with me. Um, it then got, so we did that broadcast. We then went to another village, a neighboring village, which, if anything, was even worse. Uh, and again, the Fuji signal was up. So we started broadcasting again. Now, we had a fixer with us, and we were talking to that fixer, and I was talking to her and, and asking her to, to tell me what, what people would be saying to us because not an awful lot of English was spoken in these areas. And what I found really interesting there was we were talking away, and as we were broadcasting, they started to bring bodies uh, of the dead who died in the village down past us to take them for cremation down the river. And one of the bodies came past, and I realized that it was in Canberra. Uh, and I was very shocked at, at that. And so immediately started to uh, to pull away and said that I couldn't I couldn't broadcast anymore from there because that wasn't what we were intending to do. We weren't trying to show shocking images like that, but we were looking at trying to talk to someone about about what they'd seen there. Um, so there's a there's a huge in, in closing what I'd say is there are huge editorial issues with using live streaming if you're in an area like Nepal or like any any natural disaster where, where bad things are happening. And broadcasters really have to think about what they are doing uh, before they broadcast it. Anyway, uh, Mark saying thanks, Nick, which is my signal for Rad. Uh, have a good rest of the conference. I wish I was there in person, but Bradford is a fantastic place to be today. Thank you. Thank you, so, uh, thank you very much, Nick. Um, if, you, if you can just reposition that, would be great. If you want to see Nick's broadcast, it's on YouTube, and I can give you the link to it. It really is very, very powerful. It's actually featured by Periscope as one of the best broadcasts of that day. But as I say, one of the things about Periscope is that they are quite ephemeral. Either you watch them live or you have 24 hours unless you save them to your phone, which takes a lot of capacity, and then you can put it onto YouTube. So that is available on replay if you so desire. We've only got a couple of more minutes left. So if you've got any more questions, either for Mark, looking at sort of the editorial side, Rory, either the experience of the user of, of the actual Periscoper, or dare I say the Periscope E at the other end, other 
um, apps are available, or Colin on the technical side, then now's your chance to shout. So if you've got questions, stick your hand up. I'll also be uh, looking at uh, Periscope as well to see if there are any questions there. So are there any questions in the room? Hello. I'm interested in the safety aspect of it. If you're out on your own and you're broadcasting in an area, you're, you're just broadcasting from your phone, um, what would you recommend to people and how, how vulnerable are you? This is getting very, very, very meta now. We've got ourselves to get back. Um, so what are, those, what are those faders? Pull one of those faders down. Lovely, that worked perfectly. Okay, I'll, I'll probably hand that to uh, Rory in terms of, you know, if that kind of danger presents itself, if you are the only person live streaming, what, what, what considerations are there? Well, I, I, I don't think any of the, just, just as with you know, the editorial concerns, I don't think any of these concerns are very different from what we've been used to over the years. I mean, um, more and more people are on their own, whether that's a good or a bad thing, with uh, the difference being that they've now got the kit that does enable them to go live on their own, and they just need to, you just need to take into consideration the sort of the, the normal rules. I mean, I, I think it's interesting to me because I'm a great fan of Paul Nurse's work in um, uh, Baltimore. I don't know whether you saw him periscoping there yeah. from the Guardian. Absolutely brilliant. You know, right in the centre of the story, things happening all around him, people interacting with what they thought of the rioters and so on. Now, that is a dangerous situation. Um, and he's a grown up, he knows what he's doing, he's surrounded by lots of you know, professional people helping him as well. But I think you just got to think, as, as Roy says, it's like any, any story. Think about where you are, what you're capable of doing, how much support you have around you. So if you start periscoping and you start getting a lot of abusive messages coming your way and you're in a volatile situation, you know, you might want to shut it down. Um, but, you know, my experience of watching other people doing this is that it rarely gets out of hand to that extent. It actually is quite helpful, not just on a security level, to have someone else with you when you're doing some kind of live broadcast. Because while you can be explaining what's going on, the other person could be looking at the questions popping up on the screen and feeding them to you that then you can respond to. Because believe me, looking at the questions popping through here at the same time as talking is not an easy thing to do unless you're you know, extremely talented. So that, you know, if you do have someone who could then read the questions and then pass it over to you, the best ones, rather than having to look and filter them yourself, that is actually quite handy, regardless of the extra security that someone else could give you. Um, we've probably got time for one or two more questions, if indeed there are one or two more questions. Hello, we have one over there. Could we get the microphone to you? That would be lovely. If you could pass it on, that would be great. I think it's worth also just oh, mentioning... Oh, Colin, one second. I think it's also just worth mentioning that um, you need to look at the camera and not the screen if you're wanting to... Uh, a broadcast, and if you're walking around looking at the screen, there are some very practical uh, issues that might you, you have to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, but um, I mean, it's um, Go. I've got a question for Rory, it's just to, it's to do with permissions, and so just that, that uh, idea of you periscoping from the palace. Um, I got, I got Her Majesty's permission <laughs> in writing. Do, do, yeah. do, you, do you periscope first and uh, ask for forgiveness later, or? I, I have been quite careful about asking people if they, I mean, there are, there are public events where, you know, where there are crews. At the, the Twickenham Count the other night, there were a lot of crews. Um, and then there are, you know, more discreet events where I, I would ask, yeah. Um, and, and make the point that you do realize this is live and people may be offended or whatever by what you say. I mean, that's a, a, another classic editorial question as well. I mean, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't put a, a BBC camera in front of somebody that you haven't sought the permission of filming, or you wouldn't go and start filming in a place that you haven't cleared that filming in the first place. It's exactly the same concept with Periscope. I mean, you wouldn't start filming something live in order to broadcast about it on Periscope if you haven't had that conversation. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Indeed. So could you get a microphone over there, please? Because otherwise, so, um, Jeremy's very quiet normally. So. Well, I have to deal with a few complaints around this kind of thing. Some of the issues relate to people inadvertently getting into shock. We had a, a case last week where somebody was actually filming himself on a train, and there was somebody sitting right behind him, and she objected to being filmed. And we didn't really have an issue about that because it was a semi public place. But occasionally you find there are people who really don't want to be filmed. They might be, for example, have abusive partners or something like that. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, we've basically had to bury the film when that has happened. So that is a slight issue. Yeah. It probably depends where you're going to be, I suppose. Yeah, that's a fair point. Okay, uh, any more questions? If not, we will draw this session to a go. One final question at the back, and then we will draw this very first and possibly last um, session about live streaming through smartphones to a close.
Uh, Rory, um, you said it's uh, mainly kids that are shooting vertically. They're all on Instagram at the moment, rather yeah. than on Twitter. Do you think we'll get an Insta version of Periscope? And I do you think it's a good way of engaging with the younger audience? I, I, well, I think I think it is. I mean, you know, obviously, it, it's, Instagram is not um, 16 by 9 either. It is it's perfectly square. So I think, you know, the popularity of Instagram is one of the things that got me thinking that maybe, you know, one shouldn't always see the world through 16 by 9. Um, I think, yeah, that, that's the, the other interesting thing is what the competition will be. We were talking earlier about Meerkat versus Periscope. I mean, somebody sent me a fantastic graph a few weeks ago, Meerkat taking off, and then immediately Periscope came, just zooming past it and Meerkat taking off. But Meerkat is, uh, you know, working quite closely with Facebook, did you yeah. say? Yeah, yeah. just developing a, a login system with Facebook. Moment, which is which was fascinating as well. Like it's, uh, and it's Facebook is so much the most powerful social media platform on the planet that you know if if they do manage to do that, then then that could could uh, could be very bad for Periscope. Yeah. Okay. So. Um... That's pretty much it for this session. Rory's running away to turn off his meerkat right now. Um, thank you all very much in this room for uh, participating. If I double tap the screen, people watching would see me, which they really don't want to. So if you, are, if you have been watching on Periscope, thank you very much as well for t participating. But my particular thanks to Mark Frankel from the social news team, from Colin Muir, the mobile journalism team within uh, uh, News Gathering, and of course, Rory Kevin jones the technology correspondent. Um, so I need to sort of sign out of this, otherwise I keep broadcasting live which probably won't be the best thing. Uh, my name's Mark Settle. I do the mobile journalism uh, training for the College of Journalism, BBC Academy. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and goodbye. Swipe down to stop. Right, there we go.